Hello, everybody. It's time for another Fast Fun Friday. This is going to be a quickie, so come on along and let's create. Today, I kind of took a cue from Gina Aaron's channel because I had seen this technique a long time ago and I cannot remember who I saw whose channel I saw it on, but Gina was doing it on one of her recent videos. And it's like, oh, I haven't done that in such a long time. It's a really easy and fun technique to just make some background papers. So I thought I would quickly share it with you today. So what you're going to need are a sanding sponge, sandpaper, an emery board, some kind of mildly abrasive rubbing thing. I put a towel down because it the, when you use sandpaper it can kind of make a mess. And then you just want some kind of dark pieces cut from a magazine. So put a stencil down. This one is Tim Holtz Gears stencil. It's a, one of the tag stencils. You put the stencil down first, magazine page on top. Um, I have several grits here that we can try. I, this is like a 100 and a 150 sanding sponge. But you just rub across. And you'll find as you experiment with different grits of sandpaper and also different stencils with different size openings or patternings, you'll find what works best and what you like. Like this is the, yeah, this is the 100 side. It's working, but it's kind of also scratching the surface of the magazine page, which if I was going to use this stencil with the gears in a steampunk kind of um, layout or design, I wouldn't mind those scratches. So, again, it just kind of depends on what you're going for, the look you're going for. So, this just happened to be a Christmas <laughs> issue of a magazine, so you're going to see a lot of Christmassy things. So let's put that up there. I'm going to, I have a sanding sponge here, and it's just marked medium. So I have a feeling it's probably a 150. Whoops, wrong way. Sorry. And that goes under. Yeah, and the magazine goes on top. But I think this is probably a, like a 150 grit. I really like that one. Me and my circles, right? I love the circles. You know that. I know a lot of you do too. It just, what is it about circles that it just resonates with me so much? I'm just going to go on half of this because then I can use the other half for a different stencil. Yes, that one worked well. I really like it. Hope I'm holding this where you can see it. Okay. So that was the Dilution Small stencil. It's called Holes Small. That worked out really good. Then I have a uh, Andy Skinner Alphabet Spaghetti Stencil. Let's just try this on the bottom here. And when Gina did this, she tried um, like a red background and backgrounds other than just really dark. And if they were fairly plain with not a lot of subject matter on them or patterning, it, it worked good too. It looked fine. Like this where the cookies are, we're not really going to see very much, but you can see where it's darker. Let's try and go look through those circles. Oops. Let's see, you can even kind of overlay. I just went over in this area where the circles were and then the numbers and letters alphabet was. So that's cool. Um, okay, I think I was doing that, wasn't I? And let's go for this one. It's kind of a uh, 
I really want to say. This one is kind of a medium in tone. It's not real dark. This is a really old stencil. I don't know where it came from. I've had this one for a long, long time. Let's try a finer grit. This is a... Well, that's a 150. All right, let's try the really fine grit. I don't have, like... This one is a 600, so we're really... I don't think... I think you're going to have to work too hard to get anything with that. But that a lower grit, maybe a 400 or even a 200, which I guess I don't have, um, would scratch the surface of the paper less. Okay, this is a 150. Let's see, you get a lot more scratching. Gina was using a, like a nail... One of those nail file blocks. It's got like two different grits of nail file and then like maybe a buffer on a spongy kind of block. Yeah, this is not good at all. That's really making too many scratches. That's a 100. That's even worse. It might be the stencil too. Maybe the stencil's too fine because this is from the same magazine. So let me try a different. Let me just get rid of that paper. Let's try a different stencil. I think maybe it's just not picking up the edges of that stencil. Let's try this one. This is a joggle stencil called Floral Textured Leaves. What worked? This worked. Maybe I need a higher grip. It's kind of counter intuitive to me because or maybe it's just the background's just not dark enough. I don't know. Or a combination of all of them. Yeah, this isn't working either. Not working. Hmm. Well, let's go back to the circles, which did work. It, it could be, a, a, you know, a combination of things. Also, like, the thickness of the stencil. Let's see, now that one's coming through. Okay, I guess it's just kind of a trial and error as far as what's going to work and what's not. And I think going in a circular motion helps as well. I'm getting rid of this towel. I was just hoping for some easier cleanup, but it's just kind of in my way. Okay, so there you can see it's it worked there and there. So this one worked. It, the packages don't tell you like the gauge of the material. So evidently, you know, some maybe are just more conducive to this. Here's another one that's kind of medium in, in value here. Value is that's the word I'm looking for. And this one's working well. No, and you should try not to move it, but I did. Just trying to keep my head out of the shot. Now see, this is what I was trying to avoid having everywhere by letting the towel catch it, but that's okay. So anyway, you get the idea of how to do that and the results that you might get. Um, some of these came out better than others. None of them came out as well as Gina's did. So take a look at her video. I will link it in an iCard or the description, one or the other, when I edit this. And 
you'll see the results. She got really good results, so you might be able to tell between what she used and what I used. I think um, the darkness of the image or the plainness, <clears throat> how much solid color you have, is really kind of key. So it's not fighting with the ghost image that you're getting from your stencil. But I thought, okay, so if we have these and we like them, what can we do? What if we don't like the whiteness? Can we color that and what will happen if we try to do that? So let's give that a try. So my first thought was something easy like, okay, can I just spray it? So let's get a spray here. What do I want? Um, I think I want something probably translucent and fairly light. So let's try this Dilutions Fresh Lime and see what happens there. I'm going to grab a baby wipe. So... As you can see, you can still see the pattern, and you can see on the baby wipe the dust that was probably still left on there from taking the printing ink off. But so yeah, that works. Give that a dry and it will lay flat, I'm sure. This one that we can't really see that well um, let me get that dust off of there first. What if we put some ink on it? We have Distress Ink in old paper. And I'm just going to rub that across. And that works too. It's well, it might not be totally translucent. It is light enough that it's just coloring the, the white where we lifted the ink. So for collage papers, you know, if you're going to tear it up and you use, use bits and pieces, you could do this first. You could glue it down and then do it after you add it to your page, to your collage. And then when it's dry, go over it with matte medium. Oh, what else should we try? I know paint. Let's just try a translucent high flow. Trans, yeah. Yeah, this is translucent. I don't know why I'm going with green. I've been doing a lot of green lately, and then green's really never been in my wheelhouse as far as my go-to colors. Oh, I like this. That really brought that out, that design. Mm-hmm. I like that. And we have this big one. What about... I don't know what you're probably thinking. Yeah, yeah, Sally, we get it. Pretty much anything that's translucent is going to work. I, and you're right. And play and see what works best for you to give you the look that you want. I'm going to try just some watered-down Distress Paint, I guess, just because it's right in front of me. I'm just going to put it on with the dabber and then wet my brush. Maybe I'll just spray it faster and easier that way. I'll just get it wet. Okay, this had the alphabet on it, which going over this busy photograph, you you couldn't really see it very well. You still can't see it a ton, but 
as a start of a background to do other things on top and then just let pieces of that pop through, that would work. So just thought I would share since I saw this on Gina's channel. And if you're not familiar with Gina, check her out. I will link her channel in the description or in an iCard. You'll find it. I hope you enjoyed this Fast Fun Friday. Try it. Play with it. It's We all have stencils and most of us have magazines. Oh, you know, and the other thing, and I may just come back after I try this, but I, I picked up this little tiny sketchbook. It is from Handbook. I don't know if the camera will pick that up right there. It says Handbook. And it's just, there it is. It's got fairly thin pages, and I'm wondering, yeah, they're probably too thick. I was just wondering if I painted one of those pages solid, if that technique would work. So I will try it off camera so as to not take up your time, and if it works, I'll post a photo at the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed today's Fast Fun Friday. Give it a try. Grab some really dark magazine pages or even sections of magazine pages that are dark and pull out your stencils and an emery board even if you don't have sandpaper and uh, play because just another option for making background papers which we all need right here let me show you how bad I need background papers this is just my cast off pile <laughs> it's just stuff that I've taken from and then thrown over here or made and thrown over here. That was another Fast Fun Friday. Paper towels, tags, pattern paper, doilies. I mean, you name it, it's in here. Jelly prints, just digi prints. I need to go through here because I do have an organization system. I really do file folders that are labeled but you know how often do I sit down and now I have this big pile to have to sort through and it's hard to throw it away because you never know you might need it so that's a project for sure okay kids thanks for joining me today uh, if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're going to try it leave me a comment down below that says I'll try it and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.